welcome and today i want to introduce you to a question reflecting on purchases ledger control account and before that one i just want us to have an overlook of what is actually control accounts now when you talk about control accounts just as the name suggests control it means it is checking on some arithmetic accuracy and these accounts are used to check on their arithmetic errors and whose totals equal to the sum of the subsidiary accounts. Those are the control accounts. Now, normally we have two types of control account. That is the purchases ledger control account and sales ledger control account. But for this particular case, we are going to examine the purchases ledger control account. For sales ledger control account, you can kindly leave, uh, click on the link in our description below and you'll be able to understand more about that. Now, when you talk about purchases ledger control accounts or simply creditors ledger control accounts, we know that as a business, a business will normally make credit purchases from the suppliers or from the vendors or from the creditors. And their credit purchase means that this business does not pay on the spot. In other words, it is a deferred payment. They pay later. Now, when they make these particular purchases in terms of credit uh, facility or service, they record those transactions in what is known as the purchases ledger. And this purchases ledger refers to the individual creditor's account. Let's say, for example, a business has 10 creditors it means it has to prepare the individual account for each and every creditor in that particular business of course because creditors are liabilities and we use the double entry principle when there's an increase in liability it's supposed to be credited but if there's a decrease we're supposed to debit that is the double entry principle now they for example this business has the creditors a b and c it means that when these uh, when they buy some amount of good let's say sixty thousand from a it means this account is going to increase the liability has increased and therefore it is supposed to be credited same to be for example an amount of fifty thousand the liability has increased it's also being credited and therefore when they buy some goods also from c let's say an amount of hundred thousand the amount also increases itself is supposed to be credited and then we are saying that these control accounts there is uh, the, the total of the control account must be equal to the sum of the subsidiary accounts. Okay, so it means after preparing the purchases ledger, the ledgers for each individual creditor, the business is also supposed to prepare what is known as the general ledger. That is a ledger that combines the total of the three. And in this case, we are talking about the purchases ledger control account. So the, the total of this one should be 210,000 to 10,000. And because there was a credit in each of these accounts, the same entry is made in the general ledger. So we are going to credit this account with an amount of 210,000. That is the total of the individual creditor's account. In other words, what you are saying that credit entries in the purchases ledger or the individual creditors account are credited on the purchases ledger account while on the other hand debt debit entries in the individual accounts are also supposed to be debited in the purchase purchases ledger control account so the same entry applies to all and it is used to check on the arithmetic ac accuracy. Why? Or the arithmetic errors because if suppose this one is 210,000 and then we enter a value of 150 or 200,000, it means an error was omitted in either of the accounts. 
And then now, when we talk about purchases ledger control account, this is now the hint that is going to guide us. Because we know if there is an increase in the liability, it's supposed to be credited. It means that items that increases what is supposed to be paid are credited. While items that decreases what is supposed to be paid are debited. That is the double entry principle for liabilities or creditors in terms of transactions. So I want us to look at the example and see what we're going to do. Like I told, from the following information, prepare creditors ledger control account, which is simply the purchases ledger control account. Okay, so we have a purchases ledger balances brought forward. Now, normally, when balances are brought forward, it means it is treated as an increase. So this one being a liability account, when the liability increases, it's supposed to be credited. So we are going to credit that balance right away. So we have January 1st. So we have a balance brought forward for the previous period. That is an amount of 8,972. Then we have totals for the year. Those, these are now part of the transactions. Purchases. Now, these are credit purchases. So it means they are increasing what this means supposed to pay. So they're supposed to be debited. That is on 31st. We can talk about 31st, December 31st. So we have uh, credit purchases credit purchases they are supposed they are increasing what's supposed to be paid and therefore we are supposed to credit the amount of twenty three thousand five hundred and eighty nine okay then we go to returns outwards returns outwards refers to those part of or those amount of goods that were initially bought by the business but returned back let's say for example our returns Outward in this case are 3,843. Let's say, for example, they are part of the purchases. So it means part of 23,589, an amount of good worth 3,843 were returned back due to so many reasons. For example, the goods were expired, wrong quantity, the goods were damaged. So it means they are reducing what this business will pay. It means this business will pay less the returns outward they will not pay that amount so it's supposed to be debited those items that decreases the what's supposed to be paid remember our hint here okay so we have returns that is as of december 31st we have returns outwards returns outwards Let's put an amount of, it's supposed to be an amount of 3,843. Then we go to discount received. Now, discount received means business, this business was supposed to pay a high amount, but they were asked to pay less this amount. So it means it is reducing what they're supposed to pay. So a decrease is not supposed to pay, is supposed to be debited. So we also have the same date, deck 31st, and then we have discount received. We are paying less that amount, and therefore we debit with an amount of 1582. Then lastly, checks, checks that were checks paid to suppliers now checks paid to suppliers means what it means this business owed the supplier some amount of goods 
and when they pay it means it is reducing what they're supposed to pay so it means the next payment will be less what has already been paid so we debit with an amount that is december 31st uh, an amount of those are checks paid checks paid of an amount After making all the entries, we now balance this account. And the balancing will follow the normal balancing of the T accounts that we have already learned in our previous units. Okay. And the first step is to determine the total on both sides. So let us start with the credit side. We have 23,589 plus... 8,972, we get a value of 32,561, we reach it somewhere separately, we do the same for the debit side, it's supposed to be 38,043 plus 1582 plus 2473 we get a value of 25 again right somewhere 25898 so we're going to use those values so we should normally start with the larger value we write it of course we skip one line uh, one space we write it somewhere there then the larger value was supposed to be 32,561. And I will tell you this one, we do that one. Then we get the account, uh, the account balance. Account balance is obtained by subtracting the smaller total from the bigger total. And the smaller total was 25,890. Uh, three we subtract it from this one so 32 561 minus the answer is supposed to be 6663 that is the account balance that is the difference between the two sides that account balance we write it on the side which had the greater total and give it a name balance carried forward so we are going to write it here. The side which had the total at the first was this one here. So we write that 63 below these ones here. 63, 6,663. And give it a name, balance, carried forward. That is as of December 31st. After doing that, confirm the two sides are equal. Like when you add this one, it's essentially 6,663 plus this one is supposed to give you 32,000. So confirm that two sides are equal and double underline. Okay, we double underline. After double underlining the total, because this one was being carried forward, it means it is being brought below the side which had the greater total at the first at the start so we bring this balance here and write 6663 and give it a name balance brought forward as at december 31st please don't forget to subscribe if you find this one helpful to you